only two tools. So I stuck another bag in the park. I thought I'd be first then. I've got my meeting with Robert Bean from the council to prepare for. What's your excuse? Oh, well, I never get as much done as I'd like to on insert day, so... Well, I'll, uh, try not disturb you. Ditto. Oh, actually, re your meeting with Bain. I was just going to put these on your desk. They're copies of the yearly budgets for St Dominic's and Havelock High. Thought they might help you. Well... Thanks, Evan. That's really good of you. Hey, we're a team, aren't we? Sorry, guys. The milk's off. Man, it's not your fault. What are we going to do? We'll have to have them with no milk. I'm not hungry. Lisa, you must be hungry. You had nothing to eat last night either. Who's that? Shh. Move, kitchen, go. Don't tell me. You're in the bath. Aye, so look, look, I'm sorry about I had my earphones in. You know why I'm here, Larry? Look, you'll get me so to you. And ten percent would talk, right? By five o'clock this evening, right? That's a promise. Shut it, stop messing me about it! Aye! Leave my brother alone! Lisa! <laughs> oh. oh. Now you never told me you had a little sister, Larry. Interesting. This has got nothing to do with her. Well, it might have. If you don't get your act together. Five o'clock, Larry. Or me. And your sister. May have to go on a wee date. Larry! So, shut up! Right, you're in trouble, Lisa. Big trouble. Look, just... Keep your heads down today, yeah? And you, keep your mouth shut, no blabbing. <laughs> Morning, all. Morning. You look smart, Audrey. It's quite a special day, so I thought I'd better mark the occasion. Yeah, we were just saying how weird it's going to be without him. Tom. Yes, quite. All right. I suppose I'd better get back inside. I'm surprised there's room. 
swap Simon's ego and take him to Palmer's place. No, no, Nicky. <laughs> Um, Darren Hughes, first warning of the term, knocking over teachers will not be tolerated. Never knew you were a teacher. Well, you know now, so walk, don't run. Uh, uh, Sue Spark, our new science NQT. Uh, Nikki will look after you. Hiya, Nikki Boston, head of the PRU. That's the first time I've properly been called a teacher. <laughs> it's not the only thing you're going to get called in here. Come on, I'll show you around. the occasion? It's my birthday. We expecting your telegram from the Queen any day, then? You doing anything special? Well, I was thinking if anyone's free after work, we could head to the pub. Drinks are on me. Sounds nice. Come on. George, this is Sue Spark. This is George Windsor, who's head of modern languages. Hello. And this is our deputy head, Simon Lowsley. Oh. Simon and I already know each other. Yeah, you did your training at my old school, didn't you? Yeah. Welcome to Waterloo Road. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, please. We really would have expected you to get in touch last term, Mr Brown. Well, I'm sorry, it's just... Look, they're dead keen to join, right? It's all been a bit last minute. And there's only the three of you at home? Yes. Yeah, I'm the legal guardian, and since Mum... My Mum's got mental health issues. She's not home. I see. Um... Well, you'll have to wait until after my next meeting, I'm afraid. Really? It's just I've got a job on this morning and if I'm late, then I'm in trouble. Well, Sonia can do the basic paperwork for now and you can come back later in the week for a follow-up chat, OK? Sonia? Sorry, it's, um, it's a bit stuffy in here, isn't it? Oof. Um, what's your full name? OK, guys, let's get started. Thanks, Simon. I'll take it from here. Sorry I got held up. I'll try and make this brief. Welcome back to another term. <laughs> You're going to need a sense of humour over the next term. There's no way of spittening the pill, I'm afraid. We're going to have to cut back in virtually every area now we don't have Lorraine Donegan's slush fund. Yeah, Waterloo Row was living in a bubble as an independent. <laughs> we have all worked in state-run schools before, Simon. It's true this is a transitional term, but there's no reason we shouldn't rise to the challenge, and I don't want the pupils to suffer as a result. Our job is to make sure they've had the best education possible when we come out the other side. And will you still be head when we do? Oh, sorry, I just understood you were only acting head. Yes, well, um, I'll be in the position for this term at least. What matters is we all have a job to do. Oh, George, can I get your departmental budgets, please? Well, you know, I'd rather open a vein than let you down. You are the one department I'll be investing in, so help me out here. <sighs> Why I left Shanghai, I'll never know. Sorry I'm late. I got slowed down by my travelling companion. Oh. Well, didn't want to miss the special assembly. She was up at the crack of dawn this morning. Morning, everyone. Morning. 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 Good to see so many familiar faces. But I'd like to welcome all newcomers to Waterloo Road. Oh, what? I hope the next term is fruitful for you, and I'm sure oh, your teachers and classmates it. will help make you feel at home here. I'd especially like to welcome our new teacher, Miss Spark, who is joining the science department. <laughs> but it is also appropriate that we say goodbye to someone. Tom Clarkson was a much loved teacher and valued colleague who sadly died in an accident at the end of last term. 
Most of you will know Mr Budgeon, who has been off sick. And I'm glad to say he is here to lead us in a farewell to Mr Clarkson. Bear with me. Uh, I'll keep this simple, because actually it is. For those of you who didn't know Mr Clarkson, Tom, I'm only sorry that you didn't get the opportunity. For those of us who did, our lives will have been enriched because of it. Mr Clarkson was the proud and dedicated coach of the Waterloo Road football team, who will be playing a boys versus girls friendly this afternoon. In the meantime, I would like to invite you to join me in a minute's Silence of Remembrance. Right there. Why don't you come back inside? He's one poxy minute, isn't gonna bring him back. We've got the football match this afternoon, that's in his memory. How can we do a football match without a coach? Well, I'm. I'm taking over for now. Yeah? Well, good luck with that. Can you leave me alone now? Please? We all miss him, Casey. <laughs> Christine. About the Brown Twins. Sorry? Lenny and Lisa Brown. I knew them when I worked at Havelock High. I saw them in assembly. Yeah, of course, they, uh, they enrolled this morning. It's just the state of them. <laughs> I know, they certainly could use a good scrub. But the thing is, when I had them at Havelock, they were bright, chirpy wee things. Well, I dare say they hadn't hit puberty then. Well, yes. And they had their mother at home. She's in long-term psychiatric care, apparently, so they're doing the best they can without her. Oh, how very sad. Miss Mulgrew. I don't know what it is. Lenny and Lisa Brown. Remember me? No. Miss McFall from Havelock High. Yes. Well remembered. You give me detention for cheating when I never. Really? Well, water under the bridge. Now, haven't you two changed? I remember your brother at Havelock was hoping to go to Catering College. What's he doing? What about your brother? What's he up to these days? I don't have a brother. Yeah. Well, that's your lookout. I've got to go. Nanny onto the boom. Looked like this kind of place. The bluest jeans that I've seen. And a smile on his face. Uh, welcome, class. Hello. Uh, 
take a seat at your workstations. Write your name on the stickers provided so that I can get to know who you all are. I'm your new teacher, Miss Spark. Hopefully, you're all going to be my bright sparks this term. Oh, my God. And speaking of bright sparks, it's fitting that our first lesson should be a simple introduction to electricity. Oh, uh, we're working in groups of three today. No, no way. Uh, sit back down, please. Are you joking me? They're rank. No, I've planned this lesson for groups of three, so sit back down, Rhiannon, or I should be forced to give you a warning. I don't feel so good, Lise. We need to eat. Where's the stuff Larry gave you? You're about old to be in year four. Oh, shut your face. I'm in year six. So what? Your special needs or something? She's in the PRU, so she's repeating like everything. Just this science module actually, Mr. Perfect. Plus, maybe I like hanging around with munters. Skills. What's that? Nothing. Let me see. Cereal. That's one sad snack item loser. He's replaceable or something. I mean, Miss Boston's taking his English class. Miss Boston's coaching the football team. Well, she is not Mr. Clarkson, and she'll never match up. She's supposed to. Look, Casey, I know you're hurting, all right? But it's not going to make anything better blaming Miss Boston. In fact, I reckon it's going to make you feel worse. Oh, could it? Because you're a fair person. And you know Miss Boston's only trying to help. She really cared for Mr. Clarkson, too. So she's probably got a really good idea of what you're going through. You just gotta give her a chance. I've um I brought the things from Mr. Clarkson's memorial. I fixed it. I made it myself in CDT. You better take better care of it. I thought we could print off another photo from the school website and we could put it in the trophy cabinet. Yeah, with the strip and his rough whistle. Good idea. Look, Casey, I've been thinking. Um, I know you said you weren't playing in friendly today, but I'm just, I'm worried that you might end up regretting it because, well, like you said yourself, the team really mattered to Mr. Clarkson. So don't you think he'd want the captain that he trained himself to go and show the boys what's what? I suppose if it is for him. I think you can make that pretty clear yourself. You just agree to say a few words. So much for keeping our heads down. Here we are. One for you as well, Flower. Bit of scran, Annie's looking better already. Well, even so, I'd like to speak to your brother. See if he can take you home as you're feeling poorly. Laddie works mornings all this week. I don't need to go home. I'm fine now. OK, but I think it would be a good idea if he took you to see your family GP, just in case. I'll call him shortly. OK. 
I've been trying to explain to Lenny and Lisa how much better they might feel if they had a nice hot shower before school, washed their hair. And we told her our boiler's getting fixed. But you can use the facilities here. And Mrs Budgeon said she'd find you some PE clothes to wear whilst we have yours washed. If they wanted. Eh, uh, I'm not taking my clothes off. Thank you, Miss McFall. Lenny was lucky you were there when he blacked out, but I think you can leave this to us now. <laughs> Some things never change. Best leave him to it. Don't worry. He set a firework off right next to his head and he still won't wake up. <laughs> yeah. There's been such a lot of change around here recently, it must be difficult for you all. <sighs> Look. I know I've been off with you. That's understandable. I took your job. No, I thought you were a prat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a bit of both, really. But either way, I'm sorry. You're not a bad guy. Thanks. Let's just remember we're on the same side, so let's try and work together, yeah? Well, well, the main thing is that Casey gets looked after. Yeah. Uh, Simon, I'm just off to my council meeting. No worries. We've got it covered here. Hmm. Well, that looked cosy. Oh, he's still a smug know-it-all. But you know what? I think he really cares about the kids, so... I have decided to bury the hatchet somewhere other than his actual head. Good, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> See, Mr Lowsley's lining up his allies, then. You mark my words, he's got his eye on your job. Isn't there a dialysis machine missing you at home? Just warning you, Christine. No need, Grantley. I'm on to him. Okay, right. Lenny seems okay now, but it would be good if you could call the office back to discuss a few things. Thanks. What are you doing? I said I would call the brother. I just wanted to make sure. Look, I understand your concern, Audrey, but these things need to be handled sensitively. I've put your papers together. But it just seems obvious to me that those children are being neglected. They've only been here a morning. We can't go making assumptions. Christine, I knew them when the mother was still at home. The deterioration is unbelievable. There are plenty less than fragrant teenagers in this building. You can't violate their privacy by demanding they strip off and jump in the shower. The boy's sickly. He fainted from hunger. Yes, and now he's here. He'll get at least one hot meal today. <sighs> OK. Très bien, Hamish. Hey, Chazny, qu'est-ce que vous avez fait pendant les vacances? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same question as I've just asked three other people. What did you do during your holidays? Got wasted with my mate and nicked my uncle's car. <laughs> <laughs> In French? <laughs> if you don't know the words for wasted or nicked, then be creative. Perhaps whilst in your cups you purloin the vehicle belonging to your mother's brother against his consent. If you say so. No, if you say so, Chasney. Tomorrow, in French, in front of your colleagues, word perfect ten times. You, qu'est-ce que vous avez fait pendant les vacances? I know what you're asking, but we don't speak French. Yes, hence the classes. But as you seem to be lagging behind even these gibbons, I have a suggestion to help you catch up. Now, make sure there is enough information on the monarch of your choice to support your project, where you'll find yourself struggling. <sighs> Dynasty, is your head itching? No. Oh, seriously, I, I think there's something in my ear. Can you look? <sighs> Hello, you two. Thought you'd been sent back to class. The French teacher told us to come and catch up on some basic vocabulary off the internet. Because we're new. All oh, right. We don't care. It's not like anyone wants us there anyway. They just need to get to know you better, I'm sure. As do I. I wanted to apologise if I upset you both earlier. It's good to see the colour back in your cheeks, Lenny. 
Do you know, I'm a cat fan as well. My cat, Mitzi, I spoil her rotten. I'm not a cat fan. It's just a T-shirt. Oh, I see. You don't have any pets? We used to have a dog called Moth, but she got run over. Sad. When was that? Anyway, feel free to come and find me if ever you need to. Or if you just want to talk. We don't. Mess. Maybe she's just trying to be nice. Yeah, or maybe she's trying to stick her nose in it. Mind you, if she wants us to be friends, maybe we should take her up on her offer. Oh, afraid so, babes. Just seen one. Oh, I've got mitts in my hair. So, yeah. wear them with Prad or shave your head. That's what they do inside. Oh, that's helpful. Well, they've got to feed somewhere. Circle of life. Oh, it's them. You don't know that? I saw do. That stupid new teacher made me sit next to him. You just know that they're crawling. <laughs> You've clearly got big plans for embedding Mandarin into the curriculum. Mandarin is going to be the first language of business by the time these kids enter the workplace. And how many of Waterloo Road's progeny do you envisage going into international commerce? <laughs> They'll have a major advantage over many of their peers. Mm -hmm. And you're also pitching for a wider vocational syllabus for those less academic students. We want to be progressive, but realistic at the same time. Mm, well, I have to be honest, Christine. I mean. We're cutting back in all areas at the moment. You're asking for a budget increase. A, a temporary one. Just for this first year to help us with the transition from being an independent. Mm. Sandra, can you bring us some teas, please? Well, hello. We just wanted to say thank you for being so nice to us. It's easy being nice, Lisa. Much easier than being unpleasant. Yeah. So, I do like cats, actually. I don't know why I said I didn't. Well, it's hard when you're new, isn't it? Everybody asking you questions about yourself. What about shy, I suppose? Well, I'm always here. And it doesn't have to be in school hours, either. If you need any extra tuition, I could come round after school. No. Larry works from home sometimes. We can't disturb him. OK. Well, I live just around the corner in Barrington Road, and I'm free most weekends. So if you've any trouble at school or at home... There's no trouble at home. You could meet Mitzi. Yeah, thanks, miss. Lenny. I, I just went a bit dizzy again. Put your head between your knees. Look, I don't think you can wait until lunchtime. I've got some nice coffee cake in the staff room. How does that sound? No, I'm all right, thanks. I'm not going to take no for an answer. Let me just get my bag. Oi, Mingers! We <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for goodness sake! Well, someone's got to do something. Why did you have to do that? What did she ever do to you? She give me nits is what? Get to the cooler at once! I see you've called your manifesto putting pupils first. Do you think your predecessor had a different set of priorities? No. Uh, of course, Michael tried his best. <laughs> his best was pretty good, Christine. Look. I appreciate your enthusiasm. It's admirable. But this proposal is naive, to say the least. And the naivety is not an asset in a head teacher. I'd rather call it being proactive. You, you, you'll see that I've made savings in other areas. Christine, you're only the acting head. I'm not about to make radical decisions about Waterloo Road's budget without someone permanently at the helm. I'm advertising the post to start next term, and of course, you're welcome to apply. Well, I hope I can persuade you I'm the right person for the job before then. Hmm. Well, leave this with me. I'm not saying an outright no to everything. Your Mandarin initiative has legs, I think. But you'd be better served learning to run Waterloo Road on a tight budget than robbing Peter to pay Paul. 
So, how's Simon Lawsley settling in? Yeah, he's, um, he's rising to the challenge, I think. Good, good. I'm glad to hear it. I knew he'd be a useful resource to you, given the circumstances. It's an old PA kit, but it'll do while I sort out your own things. There's shampoo and there's dispensers. Come on, dear. There's no one here. You need to get warm. You change round there. What is going on at home? Nothing much. Really? Well, that's not what Lisa just said. Lenny, I'm very worried about you and your sister. I need to know. Miss, Larry's only doing it for us. Honest, I mean, he's a brilliant big brother. Oh, I know he is. He's not going to get in trouble, is he? Just for a bit of weed. Christine? No. Still no word from the Brown twins' brother? Not yet. Let's hope he's busy fumigating his siblings' clothing. Oh, Mr. Windsor, you might want to spend a little more time on your teaching skills rather than poking fun at vulnerable pupils. Do you have olfactory nerves? I do. But I've been channeling my energies into addressing the problem rather than ostracizing the children themselves. I suppose we're worried about offending the parents. There are no parents. Then why is everyone pussyfooting around, then? Waterloo Road. How can I help? This afternoon? Yeah, that should be fine. I walked out of that office and right in front of me... there was about a hundred bottles of wine just sitting there for... some daft function. I could have swiped a lot of them. But I didn't. I walked right out of the building and I even managed to walk right past the office on my way here. <sighs> That's when I knew for the first time that I, I really... I can beat this thing.
take your money and you leave us alone. Lawrence Brown. I know you. And I knew you once. Ah! Look, Larry, I'm here about the twins. Lenny was... I knew it. He can't keep his mouth shut. Wait till I get my hands on him. And he wasn't well. And he's, he's better now that he's had something to eat. And he was telling me all about you and how well you look after him and Lisa. And... But what's happening here? It can't go on. I think you are aware of that. But I'm aware you're a nosy old cow. Larry, I'm going to get my phone and I'm going to walk out of here. Yeah? And then what? Call the police? You need help, Larry. No young man like you should have so much responsibility. Give me that! Oh. Lisa's clean and dry. I'm going to get some cream for the bites, but she's embarrassed and upset. You cannot really blame her. Christine's going to need to speak to their guardian sooner rather than later. I know it's a sensitive issue, but the twins aren't going to learn anything if they're being bullied because of their hygiene. I know we can't stick Lenny under a shower against his will, but we could suggest he plays in the match, and that way he gets a good run around, and they all head for a wash afterwards. Good idea. Where is Christine, anyway? She should have been back ages ago. I used to think these meetings were uh, an embarrassment, like they were beneath me. But the truth is, they saved my life. Miss McFall. Miss McFall. Please. Look, you're okay. You've just hit your head, but you're going to be fine. You're okay? Yes, yes, I'm okay. I'm really sorry, Miss McFall. I didn't mean it. No, you didn't. It's been really hard, you know, bringing the twins up on my own. And my mum, I mean, she's left us with all these debts. Well, that's why I had to, you know. But drugs, Larry, dealing with criminals. I mean, stay to the place. Maybe it would be better just for a short time for Lenny and Lisa to go into care. No. Just till you get back on your feet. Well, they're not going into care, do you understand? <laughs> My head is pounding. <laughs> do, you have, do you have an aspirin? <laughs> a water, a glass of water, please. I should be surprised to see any of you at all. I know you were all invited to the football match this afternoon instead. Well, since his mum decides the whole school needs to learn conversational Mandarin, we don't have much choice, do we? Of course, we'll look good in our uni applications, though. <laughs> Quite. Although, frankly, I fancy getting out there and cheering on the lads. I don't know about anyone else. What do you say? Great. So even the teacher isn't interested. Unlike Got Guan over there. Woman Nong Yong Chung Wan Cha Yo. That's all right, Kevin. No one likes to show off. Go see. Mr. Clarkson was the best coach ever. He knew it's what's in here that counts. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. He went out on a limb for me, and I know he did for much more of you. <laughs> I miss him, <laughs> and I want to win for him today. But whoever wins or loses, let's just please remember the man who should be here today. 
cheering us all on. But for now, we've got a new coach. So, let's go on with the show. All right, let's keep this clean and fair. Do oh, Mr. Clark some proud. Isn't my mum supposed to be here? She had a meeting with the council. She must be running late. Alice Christine. Oh, wait, what's happened? I need to talk to her. I'm here to pick up the twins. I was really worried after all the voicemails. Oh, yeah, they're at the football. They'll be back sooner if you want to wait. Oh, no, I need to get them. If you could tell me where it is. Come on, then. I'll walk you over. Son. Audrey, you sure you're all right? Listen, why don't you come with us? A bit of fresh air might do you good. No? and I had this feeling that... Oh, you and your feelings, Connor. McFall's been in the flat. Right, we need to leave it. No! Leave us alone! Right, I'm arresting you on suspicion of possession of drugs. So dead supply. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. You do not mention when questioned something that you later rely on in court. Anything you do say need to be given evidence. Do you understand? You backstabbing us! Enough! But don't let them split up the twins, please! Uh, what have you done? Uh, is it always like this? Like what? Sure, tell me about it. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Social service is going to get back to us. I said it was an emergency. Yeah, and Casey's waiting for you in the cooler. I'll have to leave her to you for now, Nikki. Sit down, Audrey. I don't want to have to punish her. She can't just lash out like that. She's got serious anger issues. I'm going to talk to her again when she's calmed down. She needs to find a way to express her feelings without leathering her classmates. How dare you take it upon yourself to go wading in like that? Those children needed help. You just got their brother arrested in front of everyone. How helpful do you think that was? You tried to defend that boy growing drugs to sell to innocent children. Don't insult me, Audrey. What Larry Brown's been doing is illegal and putting the twins in danger, but that was not the way to handle the situation. You spooked a desperate and volatile kid. Anything could have happened. You should never have gone round to that house, but having done so, you should have immediately spoken to me. I tried and you weren't here. And you should have left it to social services to deal with the police. You were supposed to be back. And he turned up. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. I mean, Christine, where were you? My meeting went on. Is that OK with you? I suppose what's done is done. Do you think, I mean, perhaps I could apologise, try and explain? I, 
would stay well clear if I were you, Audrey. What you you want who are we ilu you who are? Do you want to rule me or me that you want hoi? Wo wo yo ni zai. Wo bian so bu yang chu. Wo bian goi. I beg your pardon. It's Chang Yong Fat's death speech. Crouching tiger, hidden dragon. I learned it. Okay. So, uh, how was my pronunciation? Um, woeful. Uh, well, see, Chalky says that matter is the future. So I've been learning it off the internet during the break. The internet. <laughs> Thought teenage boys only use that for one thing. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to your next lesson, sir. Hmm. Oh, Audrey. Just heard the UN are looking for more peacekeepers if you're at a loose end. Oh, don't. It's her birthday. George, this is not a good time. No, uh, sorry, lovely. I know you must be up to your eyes in it, but I'm uh, wondering if I could just run something past you. Uh, some of my Mandarin students are more advanced than others, and uh, it seems sort of unfair to hold them back because of the demands of the beginners. I'd like to be able to give them the attention they really deserve. What do you want, George? A teaching assistant uh, to pick up the overspill. I know someone who's very reasonable. <laughs> Why not? Mandarin seems to be the only thing in the budget the council aren't going to cut, so have them come in and see me. Sonia, make an appointment, will you? Right. Um, what's his name? Uh, he's a she, actually. I thought I was on a detention. Yeah, you are. Well, we might as well make it productive. <sighs> you need to find a way of expressing your anger, Casey, without hurting anyone. You've got to learn some discipline and control. I used to box in the army. You up for it? Services on their way. Yes, yes, they are. Lenny lost two stone when we were split up before, and he never spoke for six months. So why don't you just stick us in the jail as well? We can look after ourselves at home, take Larry's gear away or whatever. But why can't we just stay at the house if that's what we really want? That is not an option, Lenny. But staying together might be as pupils of Waterloo Road. Well. There's only the guest room available at schoolhouse, and that's really meant to be for boarders, family visits. Yeah, but you won't get any visits until half term, will you? And the twins could double up with other boarders during busy times until more space becomes available. We can give it a go. Thanks, Maggie. I'll speak to the social workers, but it makes sense in terms of your education as well. I'm glad to see you two are going to a good home tonight. Anyone can take care of you, Mrs. Budgeon can. Well, from what I hear, the brother was doing a pretty good job. We're going to a nice place tonight, and Larry's in a cell. Lenny, you must understand. No? I don't? Neither do I. If you want to ignore the damage drugs inflict on our society, then I don't. Audrey! Audrey, have you ever stopped to think that just maybe sometimes that you don't get it? Those kids, they love their brother. And he loves them, and now he's gone. Yes, but surely they're much better off with you. You've been on your own way too long, and no wonder. Who could ever, ever live up to your standards? Hey, how about 
we go for that drink? I've changed my plans. No, sorry. Sorry, Sonia. I've got, um, I've got marking to do. worried about. You've been officially introduced now. Yeah, I just prefer to keep our private life private. I don't want to seem unprofessional. Okay, boss man. <laughs> How'd it go anyway? Pretty crazy. Oh, my dad rang. He's cooking me dinner to celebrate my first day in the job. And of course his future son in laws invited too. some marking. Look, I shouldn't have been so abrupt. I should have been here. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just feel... I feel invisible sometimes. Everybody just seems to be so busy, busy with their jobs and friends and their families. I just wanted to make a difference to someone. I wanted to matter. Audrey, believe it or not, I know exactly how you feel. I felt so insignificant today. All I wanted to do was drown myself in a bottle of vodka. So I stopped off at the office. That's why I was so late back. Christine, you didn't. No. I went to a support meeting instead. I decided that was the better option. You talk to me next time, won't you? You too. You're not alone. Well, it might not be the best reception, but at least you can play DVDs if you want. You'll have to share a room till another one comes free. I'm not leaving Lainey. No way. Look, you are perfectly safe here. I promise you that. And what about Laddie? How safe is he in a cell somewhere just for trying to take care of us? One thing at a time, eh? Dinner's downstairs at seven. <sighs> I've used all the knit shampoo and they'll need a new bottle. Ah, uh, Rhiannon, back here. I've, uh, I've been over these two with my knit comb and uh, they're both clean as a whistle. So it looks like you're the only one with the knits, Rhiannon. Oh, what? Hi. Thanks, Mrs Budgeon. You're very welcome. We can get out this way, down the ledge. What? Well, you don't want to stay here, do you? Yeah, I do. I mean, it's warm and clean and, and there's dinner. Like she said, it's safe. Look, just for now, Lise, they're really, really nice people here. Please. Okay. But I'm not letting her away with it, McFall. Well, what can we do? She told us to come round any time. Dad? 
smells great. Darling. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> well. Did you survive? Oh, just about. That place is a madhouse. I was saying to Simon, anything after today would be a piece of cake. How did the meeting go with Christine Margaret? Oh, no, no. No speaking out of school, eh? <laughs> Get it? Come on, there's a bottle open. Get out this way. What now? I don't know. I could chop something gross through a letterbox. Smash your windows in. Had a heart attack. I don't want to get into trouble, Lise. My poor cat. Where's my cat? I'd like to introduce you all to your new Mandarin teaching assistant, Mrs. Windsor. If you'd like to locate your nearest emergency exit, which are there, there, and there. Not just anyone can be a flight attendant, you know. Height-weight ratio for a start. Come on, guys. We're on strike. Oh, you're excluded. You're excluding me? All of you. Is there anyone there? No! Is there anyone there? This is no drill. Oh, my feet! It's a fire! Ah! No, it's not there! Facing their penultimate challenge, expectations are high for the three celebrity MasterChef finalists here next. While on BBC Two, moving stories of family breakups, mum and dad are splitting up. And on BBC Three, sales assistants are aiming high in the final part of shopping.